Hello guys, today we'll be taking a look at the Moonkin, or the Balance, or however the hell you want to say it, uh, artifact quest line for the Druid. I got my bar set up a little bit ahead of time here, so hopefully uh, hopefully we're good to go. You've had great success against our foes, but you should be ready for any challenge they send your way. You, should, you would be wise to consider obtaining yet another of the weapons of old to aid in our conflict. Let me know how you'd like to proceed. So, uh, this is what we're going to be going for, the Sith of Elune. Held for safekeeping by Taranda, the pre High Priestess of Elune, the Sith of Elune carries a long and unsettling history for druids. Tied to the origin of the worgen on Azeroth, the Sith is said to possess untold lunar power for the druid with balance enough to keep control. We need only to convince Taranda's people that you are worthy to keep it safe in the battles to come. Same. What Give me that. Do you ask of nature? A sound choice. Go with Sonarius. Sonarilex shows up. I must speak with you at once. We will protect I have received word that Taranda herself is authorized the release of a great artifact, the Sith of Elune, to aid our cause. Valoran Stilbo has agreed to give up the weapon, which he has kept as part of an investigation into the cursed worgen of Duskwood. I believe that you, champion, will be our best hope at wielding its power without succumbing to the animal rage that ebbs within. You must go to Duskwood and take up the Sith against our foes. This too shall pass. I'm awake. Yep. For now, follow me. The Dream Grove has its own gate to the Dreamway. Through it, you can travel to the far corners of Azeroth. Can I ride on you, Mr. Moose? No? Okay, so you're going to go to this little portal. You can see where it is here. Ugh. This will take us back to the Dream Grove. Or the, uh, what do they call it? Not the Dream Grove, but the uh, Emerald Pathway. Some shit like that. Some druidy shit. You know what I mean. Um, so here we are. Uh, we have a portal to Duskwood, which is right over there, I think. I still have not picked up this, finished this quest or turned it in. Uh, Duskwood. Yeah, let's go through here and meet up with Valorn. Pretty cool. Hopefully I don't do any disconnecting uh, for this video, my last video, uh, with the Druid. Had a little bit of a rough time. Ugh. The hell? Oh. So, you may have been to this place before, uh, in the center of Duskwood. Some of you may not even know this exists, uh, but there used to be a world boss here at level 60 that people did uh, for, was it Poison Resist gear? Might have been, I don't remember. Hello, Our friend. champion arrives. We have been sent by Taranda, bearing a weapon that may turn the tide of this war. Good, give it to me. You must take up the side of Elun, champion. May its power serve you well. So he's got the scythe right there, or the Sith. I'm going to call it Sith, because fuck him. Well met, champion. Are you ready for the burden you must bear? Though it goes against my better judgment, it is Tyrande's wish that this Sith of Elune be brandished once more against the new Legion threat. It is a small comfort to see it wielded by a keeper of the balance, such as yourself. Know that the last time the Sith was wielded, it resulted in great calamity. You must be vigilant to contain the bestial wrath that ebbs within. With those words in your heart, take the Sith and bring its fury against our foes. May the light of Elune protect you. Good, good fucking... <gasps> <gasps> no! So, Aradin shows up and kills Valorn. Valorn? That was a dark rider. But how did they reach us here, under the protection of the grove? I cannot believe the Dark Riders found us here. Long have they hunted the Sith to sate their lust for the artifacts of Azeroth. We thought we would be protected within the grove. And now Valorn is gone. You must become the hunter. Seek the Dark Riders and recover the Sith. We last encountered them near Manor Mistmantle and Duskwood. Start your search there and bring justice to Valorn. That rider must pay. Don't worry, friend. Remember, you can fly here. So if you've been uh, used to not flying for a while, uh, now the Legion's been out for a decent little bit of time, uh, you can fly in these old zones. So keep that in mind. You don't have to just run around. I did that on some, I think my paladin to get my ret weapon and it was just fucking, it was painful. It might have been my ret, or was it my holy weapon? I don't remember. One or the other. It was fucking painful. Uh, so let's head over to the two lay trees. And you might recognize this quest from a couple other ones. Ugh. Gotta go inside. Ugh. Please. I just, ugh. So here's my talents, by the way. You can First the night look at them real quick. And now a druid comes to investigate Manor Mistmantle. Yes. 
This can only mean the scythe of Elune has returned to Duskwood, and the Dark Riders cannot be far behind. Tell me what you seek, Druid, and I may be of assistance. Let me show so you. So I was life. correct, and the Sith is in is your quarry. Know that in order to retrieve it, we must do what no denizen of Duskwood has ever attempted. We must hunt the Dark Riders. I have been tracking them for some time since my encounter with them while hunting down the Wolf Cult. They are a blight upon these lands, and they hold no right to the artifacts they hoard. If we wish to recover this artifact, we will need to find their lair. Fortunately, I may just have the clue we need. In my previous confrontation with your foe, I was able to see a glimpse into their past. Granted blessed vision by the Cloak of Purity, I saw the Dark Riders for who they once were. Come, we must go to Aridin's camp in Deadwood Pass. I can explain its significance along the way. The light redeemed. It seems you've been followed. Dark Riders! Oh, oh. Get him. I've not played Boomkin in a while, so I don't know what the exact way to, how the exact way to play this is. But this guy bugs out a little bit. Uh, you can see there's warlocks here. There are death knights here. Uh, Boomkins have their quest here as well, and I think one other class has the something here. Won, but there will be more. Quickly, to Aridin's camp. So you'll see quite a few different people doing this. You gonna run or yeah. Okay. So uh it's a pretty simple quest. Uh it mimics the others. Like they were once a group of traveling merchants. Unfortunately they crossed the sorcerer Medivh, who cursed them to an eternity of hunting artifacts for them. Originally, I felt like it was kind of a little bit of a cop-out that they were doing it this way, but, I mean, the story kind of adds up. We just killed him, dude. He bugs out all the time. Uh, hello, Megaton, Mr. Warlock. Try and stay close to this guy. So Legion's been out for a little while. I'm enjoying myself thoroughly. Uh, Mythic Dungeons are very fun. The raid is great. Cleared it the second day. Uh, seven of seven. Uh, that was normal, of course. Uh, and then I wasn't able to do the heroic uh, version of the raid, which I think we're doing this week. So I may have some... Uh, I may have some videos up, maybe. Who knows? We'll find out. But the raid is really good. Hey, I get that achievement every time I come here. Strangely untouched after all these years. If my convictions are correct, the key to finding the Dark Riders, as well as the artifacts they still covet, can be found there. Yes. Riders on our flank! Be ready! Get them! Do stuff! We did it, boys. We the best. Um, but the race has been surprisingly good. Emerald Nightmare, I feel, was uh, very fun. I feel like early on it's it's a little bit difficult. Difficult enough to know that you're in a raid. But not too difficult where you're going, oh my god, I'm just banging my head against the wall. And then, of course, you get into um, Cenarius and Xavius, and you go, holy shit, there's just so much things, uh, so much shit going on. Uh, and it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. So if you haven't checked yeah, out the raid, the check it out. In this clearing. Let us search it. Especially, uh, I think, when this video is out, Raid Finder uh, should be out. So check out the Raid Finder. You know, if you don't have time to actually join a guild to raid or, you know, join a normal group, it's 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 very easy. You can have a good time. Turn away now, Interloper. The horrors of the past will be your undoing. Same. It's strange that the Dark Riders haven't followed us here, but I will take whatever boon I can get. I believe the key to finding the Dark Riders is here somewhere. Let us begin our search. This place is where the merchant Aridin set up camp while he was trying to apply his dubious wares to the sorcerer Mediv. It has remained strangely untouched for all this time, which leads me to believe that it may still have connection to its former owner. Help me search the camp. Let's see if we can find something to lead us to the Dark Riders. So, uh, we want to look at the Batter Journal, which pushes us away. He yells that shit. 
and you can see now we have a quest here. Dark energy hums from the journal, which appears to be the writings of Aradin and chronicles his time in Deadwind Pass. One entry in particular stands out. The Nightbane have become restless of late, and whispers are, are abound of the Sith of Elune having left Darnassus. It must be coming nearer, for the Worgen are constantly drawn to it. They will lead me to it. Those cursed Night Elves think the weapon is safe in their care. They will soon find out how wrong they were. Ugh. The Nightbane. If they're in Deadwind Pass, they may be seeking the Sith of Elune as well. Let's split up and try and track them down. We'll see where their trail leads. Why are you guys hitting me? Stop. Oh, boy. We took a little bit of damage here. I think that means we're on the right track. See what you can find in that journal. I think I've already done that. So we're going to follow the Worgen tracks. If you look up here, the first of which is a Zisoe. And here are the Worgen. I can just follow them. I think you could just head to the next point. So we'll continue uh, along the way since we can fly. Speed up a little. Do we have to fight that guy? Hello? No? Continue following the Worgens. Disoe, we'll find you. I found you, peekaboo. And they're going to start leading us. Slowly but surely. Down towards Karazhan, which is where we're heading next. He's right over the here. The Worgen led you here as well. This must be where the scythe is kept. The Worgen appear to be drawn to the catacombs beneath Karazhan. Could it be? The sewer grate leads to the catacombs underneath Karazhan. I've never paid it much attention, but it seems to be where the Nightbane are drawn to. To think, the Dark Riders may have been under our noses this entire time. Come, let us see where this leads. I am the going ahead, Druid. I will join you inside. So, do ba do. There we go, we're inside now. There is a dark energy emanating the spirits of this place. So you can see... Little shit's gonna come off the wall. It's no big deal. Just do your normal thing. Put a little DPS on them. Let me throw my Treons down. Treon! Wow. Treon. Treons? 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 I don't fucking know. Same thing. Nothing really matters. Uh, watch out for these stupid banshees floating up. They're, uh... They'll put a hurting on you. <coughs> Come here, you. Let's put some Starfall down. No, can't do the Fury. Um, got him. Let's put a Rejuve on herself. They do. It's probably because they're supposed to. They're supposed to go for a while, dummy. Jeez. Let's get our dots on these boys. Where does the other one go? Alright, let's get the Fury, or, or whatever the hell this is called. What is that? The Fury of a Loon. I just love that ability. It's so cool looking. Pretty decent AoE damage, too. I don't know. I don't think that's the uh, the spell that you're supposed to take, but I enjoy it. So we get down to the bottom. You can see the Dark Riders are down here protecting the doorway. we got to make our way through. Pretty simple. But I was talking about a Z raid uh, is out, Emerald Nightmare. Uh, give yourself a chance to play it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a very well done raid. Uh, like I said, I haven't done too much of the heroic yet. I'm not in, you know, a world first or progression rating, a super progression rating guild, I guess you would say. One that. The way is blocked. Intruders! You will go no further. So, to get across here, you're supposed Hold. to. Those spirits he's controlling look like they'll rip us That's apart. That's part. We have to figure out a way to get past without being torn asunder. Asunder. So usually, uh, I think Displacer Beast is the way to get across here. Uh, and I can change talents, but I'm not going to. I'm going to see if I can make it through here by sprinting. We should try to find a way to stop his channeling. There we go. Yeah, you can walk through this pretty easy. And you get to his to the other side, and we have to stop his channel with Solar Beam. 
Servitor. Do your duty. He's gonna run duty. He's gonna run away. And we're gonna have to fight this guy, the Conservator. Pretty easy. Pretty easy to deal with. Just do your normal thing. I just do no damage. Holy shit. Get that damage out, baby. I'm trying to remember where my buttons are. I put the Fury of a Loon onto him. There you go. Holy moly. I love it. Keep your guard up. I fear Aridan is not over gone. here. Is this the relic you seek? The artifact chambers look to be just ahead. Let us proceed. So here it is. Here is Sith of a Loon. Let's grab it. So this is what you're after. The artifacts of Karazhan belong here. And I will not allow them to be taken away. You have no right to these artifacts, fiend. They must be reclaimed in the name of the light. In Your the name of the light. Does not reach here, priest. If you want the scythe, druid, come and claim it. I'm coming. So we're gonna leave uh, Revel Cost behind. Him. I will only slow you down. He's pretty. He's pretty useless. He's about as useful as he's been up to this point. Uh, but we'll have to fight some risen guardians along the way to uh, make our way. Uh, but yeah, had a great time in the raid. Scenarius and uh, Xavius are two of the more fun fights I've done in a long time. I mean, there, there's so much uh, junk going on in those fights. Made it uh, a lot of fun. Didn't have many wipes, which was nice. Of course, it, again, it was only normal. It wasn't like we were doing heroic or uh, even mythic, which comes out this week as well. But we did... Uh, we only had two wipes, which was neat for not knowing most of the fights. Felt, feels good, man. Feels real good. Oh, Lord. Let's get some dots up. Put our junk down there and let's uh, see if we can AoE these boys down. Look at that AoE damage. Jesus. And they say they reduced AoE for Moonkins. I don't think so. It does not feel that way. Let's uh, entangle these boys and back up a little bit. Try and take them down one at a time. Or don't. Whatever. Put some... Put some stars on them. Make them see stars. That's a really bad one. But yeah, good, good time. Check the raid out. Raid Finder... This, yeah, this, this video is definitely out by the time Raid Finder's up. Check out Raid Finder. I know Raid Finder's a bore, but... Uh, it's it's a hell of a good raid. It's well done. Fights are very fun. Some interesting lore in there. You are a persistent one. Face the fury of the beast. Oh. You face the fury of the beast, baby. I'm about to mess you up. I'm gonna give you these very well. these whoop de whoops here. Oh. Keep away from him to avoid blood reap. Oh no. He got me. Let's put our treons down. He, oh, he's a worgen right now. Oh no. Ah! Damn, that's got a long ass of tether there, doesn't it? I will ride again. Goodbye, Arden. So let's pick up the Sith Walloon. There it is. That's what it looks like uh, on the character model. Pretty badass. I do think this is really cool looking. One of my favorites. The Dark Riders are defeated. We did now it. Now I can reclaim these stolen artifacts and return them to their rightful owners. You have proven an unexpected ally. The weapon is yours. Let us hope it can turn the tide in this war. The Dark Riders lost this battle, but I fear they will soon regroup. We had best be gone before they do. Today was a great blow against the Dark Riders, and a victory for the people of Duskwood. They are in your debt, as am I. Your assistance against the Dark Riders has proven a great service to the Light. Though our beliefs may separate us, I know that we share one goal. You have allowed me to fulfill my purpose in returning these artifacts to their rightful owners, and for this I am thankful. As for the Sith of Alun, I can think of no safer place than in your care. 
May it serve you well against the Legion. Go with the light. Okay, so uh, before we go, show you this real quick. New Moon is our new ability. Uh, this is our artifact ability. has a 0.85 second cast to 15 second recharge. It has three charges. It will deal 57,196 astral damage to the target and empowers New Moon to become Half Moon. It generates 10 astral power. Uh, shit, I can't. Oh no, I don't have Dreamwalk on my bar. So after this point, you would head back to your. Uh, you would head back to the Dream Grove to talk to Arc Druid Great Hoof. So I'll try and show you. I'm actually going to do something a little different here, and I'm going to show you New Moon uh, when we go inside. So here we are at the uh, Emerald Walk or Emerald Dreamway. I keep calling it Walkway, the Disney theme park walkway thing. What do you call that? Disney's money grubber place. Um, <laughs> Disney's Druid theme park. So here we are. We're back at the Dream Grove. It actually puts us up uh, at the top here. And now at the bottom like it started us out at. Let's go. And I want to show you New Moon real quick before we... Uh, actually, let's turn this in and then we'll go look at it. I'll show you New Moon. It's pretty cool. It's a neat ability. Do you need my aid? The Sith of Alun. I never thought I would see that weapon used without turning its wielder into a savage beast. But you've brought it balance to its primal nature. Alun has certainly guided your hand. You've accomplished what no druid has done before. Your trail be so we only got one more, right? Yeah, I only got one more druid artifact to get on my character here. Let's go this away, because that's where the uh, the training dummies are. Hey guys, if you want to buy... He, this guy wants to buy Fjorn Skoggle for 75 gold each. Okay, COD. Trade all you have. Uh, so here is the 104 dummies. And the way New Moon works, uh, you can see here it'll generate 10 astral power on the first cast. Boom. There's New Moon. You can see it's now changed to Half Moon. Deals 114,390 astral damage to the target and powers Half Moon to become Full Moon. Generating 20 astral power. There you see, and now it's full moon, dealing 228,779 astral damage to the target and all enemies near the target, and resets full moon to become new moon, generating 40 astral power. Boom, and then it comes down with a big hit from the sky. So I just wanted to show you that it's that is one of the best uh, abilities that any of the classes have on their weapon. I love that one. It does a fuckload of damage. Uh, it may not be as practical in a raid setting as, I guess, you know, some other things. It does spread the damage out, if you were wondering. It doesn't hit all targets because it, it, the moon does come down as an AoE. It does not hit all uh, all targets for that amount. It will split that amount among the targets. But it's still high amount of damage. My buddy uh, has only got his boomkin to 890, or not 890, uh, like 820, and he's hitting for well over a million with it. So it is a big hit. And it's, it's really cool to look at. It's a very interesting concept. Uh, it was well done. I like it a lot. So you can see here that is, here's that ability. When we open up the uh, UI for the weapon at the Seed of Ages in the Dream Grove. And that's going to bring us to our first minor trait, Sky Wrath. One rank, uh, passive increasing damage dealt by Lunar Strike and Solar Wrath by 6%. Cause 100 artifact power, which they give us. And that's going to open up the rest of the traits. You can see when they open up, there's three golden dragon dragon portraits uh, around three of these traits. These are our major traits. Uh, these are the most important ones. These are ones that do something special, uh, while the others are passives that usually add to something uh, existing. Uh, so we'll take a look at all of these. Uh, I do want to point out artifact power is going to go up as every time you put a point into a trait, the artifact cost of the next point is going to go up and eventually it'll go up exponentially into the multiple you know thousands and I mean like 30,000 40,000 and then it'll, it, eventually you'll also you know your your uh, artifact knowledge will help you increase that and you'll they'll walk you through that as you go along but eventually you'll be gaining exponentially more uh, artifact power to make up for the fact that those numbers go up very, very high, but it still will take you a long time to get enough artifact. It'll still take you a decent amount of time to get enough artifact power to get a new point 
So it makes it feel, you know, good when you finally get a new point. You go, oh, shit, I didn't even realize I was getting close. Uh, also, I'm going to read these off as they are. I'm not going to read them off as if they were max rank. So if you want to know what the max rank is, obviously, three ranks in this uh, would be 30%, uh, since it goes up by 10% each time. Uh, so let's get going. Falling Star, three rank passive, increases the damage bonus from Stellar Empowerment by 10%. We have Light of the Sun, one rank passive, reducing the remaining cooldown on Solar Beam by 15 seconds when it interrupts the primary target. Uh, we have Sith of the Stars, three rank passive, increasing the critical strike chance of Star Surge by 6%. We have Sunblind, one rank passive, increases the radius of Sunfire by five yards. Uh, Bladed Feathers, this is a three rank passive. Moon can form, increases your armor by an additional 25%. Uh, here's our first major passive, Echoing Stars, one rank. Each time Starfall deals damage, it also damages another nearby enemy for 1,067 astral damage. Remember, these numbers are, for me right now, at my item level at 104. So, you know, at... 110 with an 850 item level you're going that you know the damage values are going to be different when you see something like this so keep that in mind uh solar stabbing three rank passive increasing the damage dealt by solar wrath by five percent we have rapid innervation one rank passive innervate also grants your target 20 percent haste for its duration here we have touch of the moon three rank passive when you take damage you have a five percent chance to heal yourself for 41,597 cannot occur more than once every 20 seconds and finally, our second, or not finally, here's our second major uh, trait, Power of Goldrin, one rank. Star Surge has a chance to summon the Spirit of Goldrin, which immediately deals 50,840 arcane damage to the target. We have Twilight Glow, three rank passive, increases damage dealt by Moonfire by 7%. We have Dark Side of the Moon, three rank passive, increasing the critical strike chance of Lunar Strike by 5%. We have Sunfire Burns, 3 rank passive, increasing damage dealt by Sunfire by 7%. We have Empowerment, 3 rank passive, increasing the damage bonus from Lunar and Solar Empowerments by 3%. And our final major trait, and our final trait in general, Moon and Stars, 1 rank. During Incarnation, Chosen of a Loon, each harmful spell you cast grants 1% haste. So, how long does that last? Uh, that lasts for... 30 seconds, so let's say you get 15 cast off in there, you can have, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15% increased haste, like at the beginning of a fight, and then you'll have the haste bonus from uh, Bloodlust or Heroism or Time Warp or whatever the hell, uh, you know, whatever the hell spell is increasing your haste. So that's pretty cool, that's a really neat uh, one there, I like that one the best, Moon and Stars. Uh, you can see here at the top as well, we have three relic slots, these three relic slots uh, are available to you, only two are available uh, to you from the start. Third one is available uh, after you finish the Order Hall campaign, which can take you into 110 quite a bit, depending on how much you play, but it, it may take you a decent amount of time. Uh, these two, you, uh, like I said, you have available to you. You'll get these uh, relics to put in, in, in those slots from questing, from dungeons, and they can be from world drops as well. And also, if, you're prof if you have a profession, uh, you, you're able to make them. Uh, and then at 110, of course, world quests. You'll have occasionally that'll, that'll uh, give you something to put in these slots. Uh, they add passive item levels to your weapon itself, uh, so keep that in mind. They'll add passive item levels, uh, which is always a good upgrade, because it'll increase the base stats of your of your weapon. And they will also add passive ranks to some of these minor traits all the way around. Any of these ones without the golden portrait, of course. Uh, it can add a passive rank. They can add uh, multiple passive ranks to the same one, since we have two arcane relics. Uh, we can put, let's say, for instance, uh, let's say we have three points in Falling Star, we get two relics, they both add one to this. I don't know if this is true, I'm just using this as an example. Uh, or if this is specifically what it might do, is give you Falling Star. But, if it did, uh, we would get five of five in Falling Star, and that would increase the damage bonus from Stellar Empowerment by 50%, as opposed to the 30% it would give if you didn't have, you know, those extra points. So, pretty neat, uh, they add little passives, uh, did help out a lot. You can see up here in the top left corner as well, we have a number one now. Uh, we've purchased one trait, not including, of course, New Moon. That does not count as a, a trait, even though it shows one there. Uh, and every time we put a point into a trait, we'll gain 0.75% increase in our stamina up to 34 times. Uh, so as we go around and we start adding points in uh, for up to 34 uh, traits, you'll get that uh, increase in stamina, that passive increase in stamina, which is very helpful as well, and eventually you'll see your artifact knowledge level by hovering over here. 
uh, which you'll you'll get to know later on. They'll walk you through that. Uh, down here in the bottom, you can see there is an appearance tab. Uh, I do have one available. I played this through a little bit. We're going to go with the perp. Uh, you can see it'll tell you how to get these uh, Recover Light's Heart, Recover one of the Pillars of Creation, complete the first major campaign effort within your order hall. Uh, we'll take a look at how some of these look as we go. And this is the Envoy of Goldrin, complete the Druid class hall, and then you can do this. Uh, Lunar Call, which is, I think, my favorite. I do not want to join your guild. Thank you, though. Uh, and Nightmare's Affliction. Which is pretty badass looking, if you ask me. Oh, if you click away, it gets rid of that. And there's also one, uh, a hidden artifact appearance that you can get as well. But you can change your appearances here, which is pretty nice. So, uh, I do want to show you one more thing. You can open that UI by opening up your character pane or your inventory, wherever the uh, the weapon is. And shift right clicking on it will bring up the UI. You can see we're not actually touching the Seed of Ages right now. Uh, you can put your relics in anywhere in the world. So if you know you just get one from a quest, you stick, want to stick it right in, uh, <laughs> you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but you can only add in artifact power here at the Seed of Ages. So uh, keep that in mind. Oh boy, I'm just getting... Well, thank you. Let's just say goodbye to that. Oh lord, I'm just getting mass spam here. Um, so keep that in mind, you have to come back here to put in your artifact power, but I wouldn't suggest doing that while you're leveling, unless you're actually brought back here. When you're 110, you know, come back here, holy crap. When you're 110, come back here and put in your points whenever you have them available, because it takes sometimes it takes a little while for you to get a, the right amount of points. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you did enjoy this video. Maybe it was a little bit helpful, a little bit informative. Uh, help you know if you want to play a uh, balanced druid at some point. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please hit that thumbs up. Give me a like. I do appreciate those. Think about hitting the subscribe button as well. Uh, I do appreciate those too. It'll let you know when a new video comes out uh, in my World of Warcraft series or whatever I'm playing at the time. Uh, if you're interested in other games as well. Leave me any comments, questions, or suggestions down below. I do appreciate those too, and I'll try and respond to them as fast as possible, of course, uh, when I see them, you know, when I get a, a notification either on my phone or when I'm at my computer and I, I see that it's there. Uh, trying to think. Well, guys, uh, have a wonderful day or a wonderful evening, depending on where you are in the world, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye-bye now.